Fat man in my phone. You play Rainbow Six Siege all day when I'm home. All day when I'm home. Hello, everybody out there. Today I'm going to discuss a somewhat misunderstood feature that's in DS4 Windows. The feature I've talked about in particular is DualShock 4 controller emulation using VGEM bus and what the use cases for using it, utilizing that feature would be. And I go switch over to DS4 Windows and bring up the other scene so I can get a better view of what's going on. As you can see here in the interface, I currently have a profile loaded that it actually is outputting to a virtual DualShock 4 controller. Let me go and bring up the control panel. And see all that's exposed. All you see right there is the virtual DualShock 4 is exposed. I go. Let me just go pick that up. It doesn't help them charge it at the same time, but yeah. I can putting an input and you can see the fact that Windows can register that. Let me close that out and bring this beautiful Windows back up. Let me bring up the profile editor. Within profiles in DS4 Windows you have two options for actually outputting to a virtual controller. The obvious choice is, of course, Xbox 360, and that was the original purpose for DS4 Windows in the first place, was to be able to play games that could only recognize an X input controller, like an Xbox 360 or an Xbox One controller. <clears throat> With one of the 1.7 releases, once VGM Bus was integrated, the actual parsing was, the actual mapping method was abstracted a little bit more so it could actually map to different controller types and so I actually ended up implementing the DualShock 4 output type into the program. Before Hale was basically just of, okay, DVGen Bus has this feature, so let's try to go and put it into uh, DS4 Windows in case anybody happens to want to use the feature. It was really only later on that actually real use cases actually came to play of why you would actually want to use the output mode in the first place. <coughs> Uh, the first particular, uh, one of the biggest use cases would be for using third party, obviously for third party controllers. Most games that actually have any type of like native DualShock 4 support, whether it's via direct input or reading the device directly as an HID device, is that it'll only support Sony branded controllers, DualShock 1 or version 1, version 2 controllers third-party controllers would not be registered at all and so you'd be left out and you'd be forced to going back to have to revert to emulate an Xbox 360 controller <clears throat> and have it go and actually see the button prompts for a 360 controller in-game even for games that actually support the DualShock 4 directly. Utilizing the DualShock 4 option you, it, actually, it actually emulates a wired, DS, uh, wired DualShock 4 version 1 controller and so that games that can actually go and read that controller and utilize it can actually go and use that input directly and actually go and give you proper PlayStation 4 button prompts in-game. <laughs> now a second use case for emulating into a DualShock 4 controller that I've experienced with The Witcher 3 is if you actually want to use a Bluetooth connection. I can't remember if it actually supports the DualShock 4 version 2, but I know it definitely supports the version 1 wired but it only supports it wired. You can't go and actually go and can't actually go and use the controller over Bluetooth. The game will just will not register. <laughs> and so, if you actually want to play the The Witcher 3 wirelessly via Bluetooth, you have to go and actually use the DualShock 4 controller emulation or to make that happen. That's also the case with some. I think. Try to think, yeah, like Rocket League is another kind of case, but that's somewhat different because it actually does support the DualShock 4 version 1 and version 2, both wired and wirelessly, but it does not actually support the Sony wireless adapter, which as you can see is what I have this connected to right now. And it actually is my primary way of using the DualShock 4 on DS4 Windows. Hmm. So yeah, if I still want to actually utilize the integration in Rocket League and actually have 
PlayStation 4 button prompts show up in game, I have to go and use DualShock 4 controller emulation in order for that to happen. One other big use case for emulating a DualShock 4 controller with DS4 Windows, and probably the use case that I utilize the most, is for playing games that only support direct input controllers. Now this is definitely a time you might be thinking, okay, you're already utilizing a DualShock 4 controller on a Windows PC. Windows recognizes it and exposes it as a direct input controller natively. Why go through the extra hassle of emulating a virtual controller? There are a few legitimate reasons for this. The first reason would be the fact is kind of a nice side effect of how DS4 Windows actually opens up the controller for use is the fact it actually removes a lot of extra buffering that actually occurs within HID devices in Windows natively. And so even when emulating a virtual controller, I find in games that actually support direct input that input latency is actually lower even while using the virtual controller than if you were just to go and use the native direct input interface in game. One other reason, and probably the more legitimate reason, is the fact is once DS4 Windows opens a direct in, a DS4 controller, the direct input interface that is exposed within Windows no longer detects input due to some of these side effects of the switch to PlayStation 4 mode on the controller. <clears throat> and that, the only way you can actually get that get the direct input interface back and working is to go and actually completely disconnect the controller from the PC and then reconnect it again. You have to make sure that DS4 Windows is not running at the time, otherwise it's just the same thing is going to happen again. Now this is not just something specific with DS4 Windows, because the same behavior happens with Input Mapper and also Steam as well. It's just that switch to PS4 mode when utilizing Bluetooth connection. That's what does it. It's not anything specific with the software. <coughs> One kind of nice thing about about the reducing of the imp, the uh, buffering in Windows, though, is that if you're actually utilizing a USB or the Sony wireless adapter connection, is the fact that the mode switch actually doesn't kill the native direct input interface. So, so the fact so if you actually want to utilize use D input mode only mode in a profile, if you have the if you have the controller opened up in shared mode. Then you can just go and stop DS4 Windows temporarily as a service, and you can just go and utilize the native interface, and you still get the benefits of having that reduced buffer size for the HID device. So in that sense, that takes effect as long as the controller is still plugged in. It's for the actual HID device itself rather than anything specific with that specific instance. Let me open that back up. <clears throat> I don't think there's anything else that really have to go and show. Hmm. I think the next thing I'll do is that I'll load up Soul Reaver 2 and then give you a look about why this profile is set up the way it is. I'll always show off this game briefly. The you're not gonna be able to actually get a sense of what I'm experiencing, so you're pretty much gonna have to take my word for what I'm saying here. <clears throat> now, first off, I'm showing the yeah, DualShock 4 controller emulation within Soul Reaver 2. Now, I have fairly customized settings on this profile that I'm using. So I find well with the negative input interface, yeah, the especially with the sticks, they are way too not responsive in the fact that yeah, the dead zone is way too high. So I have a somewhat standard dead zone on the profile, but a fairly decent anti-dead zone to make up for it. So yeah, just very small push on the stick will allow me to go and actually run or go and walk. But input is fairly responsive, even though it's emulating a virtual controller. And this is about as far as I actually got in the game, because yeah, I remember doing the next section, trying to get to the next area, and this game crashes on me, so pretty much it's not playable on my system for some reason. Okay, I think it's enough of that. 
I'll go and show you the Xbox 360 controller emulation option. Okay, now I'm emulating an Xbox 360 controller in game. This isn't exactly set up for the Xbox 360 controller, so some of the controls won't be exactly the way I had it set up in DualShock 4 mode. That could probably be increased a little bit here, but it's actually not too bad as far as the anti dead zone and dead zone settings. Now the big one is actually the button responsiveness. I mean, I've experienced this beforehand too, even besides just in DS4 Windows, but yeah, especially when M utilizing an Xbox 360 controller in direct input mode. I don't know exactly how the routing goes in the driver, but it does seem to add a tiny bit of latency to go and utilize the direct input interface rather than the actual native X input interface for the controller. As right thumbstick does not map whatsoever. I'm not going to change my game settings. I'm going to revert it back. Okay. I think that's good enough for this demonstration. Now I have to go and do a cut in the video, disconnect and solo reconnect so I can show the native direct input interface. Okay, now I'm all reconnected and I'm utilizing the native direct input interface in game. Don't have DS4 Windows running in the background at all, just to make sure it doesn't interfere. Uh, the first thing there, you can clearly see the fact that they had guide and start not written map properly. Hmm. Let me try to go and see. Uh, if we will be able to get a sense of this, let me see how far it takes me to actually move the stick to or to go and walk. I have to go, yeah, that far just to engage it. Do a simple walk. Because the fact that there's no dead, no anti dead zone in place, and the end game dead zone is huge. <laughs> Matter of fact, there's no way to configure that either. Let me just check that again, just out of curiosity. Uh, nope, there's only button bindings. You can't actually configure dead zones or anything like that. So let me back. So there are one big disadvantage, and yeah, that definitely feels more sluggish. Now let's see, do button. Yeah. <laughs> definitely worse. <laughs> and this is even worse than the Xbox 360 controller emulation option. <laughs> let's see. What about that one? Ah, still feels stiff on the, as far as the camera goes, but at least uh, that that's not too high. Sheesh. Yeah, I would definitely not want to play Soul Reaver like this. So I'm glad that the DualShock 4 Tor emulation option exists. And within VGen Bus, so I can utilize it in VS4 Windows. Okay, I think that's enough of this. Let's get a little distracting. Uh, I think that's pretty much all I have to cover. <laughs> well, I'll see you later.